Secretary Pompeo, Mike, it's good to see you. It's good to be with you. Uh, in Jerusalem, back in Jerusalem. I have to say that we meet on every holiday. <laughs> we met in Hanukkah, now we meet in Purim. And these are all celebrations of our, uh, our history, and part of it is the tremendous alliance between uh, Israel and the United States. And I know you've been uh, an extraordinary champion of the U.S.-Israel alliance. And I want to thank you and President Trump for everything that you've been doing uh, to uh, support uh, this, uh, this partnership, which I think is exceptional. Uh, first of all, I think it's supported by the broad swathe of the American people. We appreciate that, uh, the fact that we have uh, a broad uh, base of support in the United States. But we also know that our alliance uh, in recent years has never been stronger. Uh, it's uh, an unbreakable bond that's based on shared values of liberty and democracy and shared interest to fight the enemies of uh, democracy, the enemies of uh, our way of life, uh, the terrorists that plague, uh, that prowl our uh, airspace and prowl our countries. And I think that working together, we've been able to achieve uh, uh, an enormous amount. Uh, under President Trump, that alliance has also brought a historic recognition of uh, Jerusalem as Israel's capital and the moving of the uh, American embassy to Jerusalem. David doesn't have to uh, travel up uh, the traffic jams from Tel Aviv, which we're trying to unloose, uh, loosen up anyway. Uh, but I think uh, also the un unequivocal commitment to uh, Israel's security, the support that you give us in international forums, all of that is deeply appreciated. Uh, I think that uh, uh, no less historic is the President's decision to walk away from the disastrous nuclear deal with Iran. He said he would do it. He did. Uh, and he said that he would reimpose tough sanctions on Iran, and he did. And what we see is that this pressure is working. Uh, we need to increase it. We need to expand it. And together, uh, the United States and Israel are working in close coordination to roll back Iranian aggression in the region and around the world. Secretary and I just spent uh, uh, the first part of our meetings discussing exactly how to do that. And I think there are ways that uh, will intensify the pressure even more. Rolling back Iran is in the interest of peace and security and stability for Israel, for our neighbors, and for the world. Uh, I also appreciate the fact that the United States gives Israel the full backing to defend ourselves against Iranian aggression. I want to use this opportunity and say that we will continue to take action as needed against the attempts of uh, Iran to entrench itself militarily with uh, dangerous weapons uh, in Syria. There is no limitation to our uh, freedom of action, and we appreciate very much the fact that the United States backs up our actions as we do them. Uh, just last week, we uncovered efforts by Hezbollah, an Iranian proxy, to build a terror network in the Syria on the Golan Heights, and uh, I can say that uh, all of you can imagine what would have happened if Israel were not in the Golan. Uh, we would have Iran on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, I think uh, uh, for this reason and for many more, I think it's time that the international community recognize uh, Israel's uh, stay in the Golan, the fact that the Golan uh, will always remain um, uh, part of the state of Israel. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you are a stalwart defender of the truth. And I appreciate your important statement uh, last week regarding the International Criminal Court. We share the concern of the U.S. and many other states that this court has lost its way. Instead of dealing with mass atrocities, the court engages in unwarranted and politicized efforts to target the states that are committed to the rule of law and that have not joined the court. It's exact opposite of what it should be doing. And therefore, the, the fact that you spoke out against this, I think, is uh, against this, I think, is uh, of stellar importance. Uh, I thank the United States for taking the moral and necessary steps to protect the citizens of both our countries against this uh, outrageous uh, uh, distortion of international law. Uh, Israel has no greater friend than the United States, and the United States has no greater friend than Israel. Uh, I look forward to our discussions, and I look forward to uh, my visit next week to Washington where I will meet with President Trump, uh, and I, uh, I believe that we can carry this relationship even stronger. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 
uh, and may we continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, you, you know that Israel has no greater friend than the United States of America. Uh, the Israeli people can have confidence uh, that President Trump will maintain this close bond. I know that you and the President have an outstanding working relationship. He sent me here uh, to build upon that and to represent him here. Uh, Israel has a special place in my heart as well. My very first trip as Secretary of State included a visit here. Uh, I'm proud to be here again, not only as America's top diplomat, but also as a man of faith. Uh, that is always newly inspired when I get the chance to travel uh, to Israel. Uh, now to the business at hand. Uh, in just a few minutes, the Pres uh, Prime Minister and I will participate in a meeting with Greece and Cyprus to promote energy security and diversification to Eastern Med. I will also discuss our efforts to counter Iran, Russia, and China. Uh, we had a chance to talk about those a few minutes ago as well. This meeting is part of our effort uh, to continue to build out the regional alliances. Last month, representatives of more than 60 countries met in Warsaw uh, and had an historic conference, which the Prime Minister attended. Arab and Israeli leaders discussed ways to end the war in Yemen, to manage refugee crisis, to confront radical Islamic terrorism, and to stop Iran's regional rampage. We're working to build the Middle East Strategic Alliance and to enhance cooperation on economic energy and security matters. Fundamentally, our view that this region needs a candid dialogue and open exchanges of ideas, especially as we seek to make progress towards a comprehensive and lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Mr. Kushner and Mr. Greenblatt recently met with regional leaders to find ways to provide economic opportunity for those regions. I know today that it's sundown, right about now, uh, the Jewish people will begin the celebration of Purim, a commemoration when Queen Esther saved the Jewish people from destruction centuries ago. I wish the Prime Minister and all who are celebrating a happy Purim. Of course, I remember when he addressed the joint session of Congress right before Purim. Oh. Uh, I was there, sitting in the uh, auditorium. Almost exactly four years ago, on that day, you spoke about the grave threat that the Jewish people face, the threat from the Islamic Republic of Iran, which seeks the absolute destruction and annihilation of Israel. The Ayatollahs have spent four decades spewing hatred supporting terrorist violence, and pursuing nuclear weapons for a war against a neighbor that wishes nothing more than to live in peace. The Ayatollah has declared that the annihilation and destruction of Israel is his primary goal. With such threats, a daily reality of Israeli life, we maintain our unparalleled commitment to Israel's security and firmly support your right to defend yourself. Under the 10-year MOU that we signed in 2016, we provide $3.8 billion annually for security assistance to Israel. And with Israel threatened by rockets and missiles from Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, and elsewhere, we are proud to deploy the THAAD anti-missile batteries here. The Trump administration, too, is dedicated to monitoring combating anti-Semitism. Our special envoy, Elon Carr, was recently here to discuss how we could deepen our commit commitment to battle this odious prejudice and all other forms of intolerance. With the dark wave of anti-Semitism rising in Europe and in the United States, all nations, especially those in the West, must go to the barricades against bigotry. Our challenge is especially urgent as the hot rhetoric of prejudice cloaks itself in the language of the academy or of diplomacy or public policy. Sadly, we in the United States have seen anti-Semitic language uttered even in the great halls of our own capital. This should not be. Tomorrow, my wife Susan and I will take a full day of activities to get a deeper sense of, of Israel and its storied history. We'll visit our new embassy in Jerusalem, which we were proud to open last year. I'm eager to see more of the timeless country, and I thank the Prime Minister and the people of Israel for what I know will be a productive and memorable visit. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.